Remo is a great notebook when it comes to interactivity. It's quite convenient to whip together a few input elements and to then take Python to handle the rest. And this is great when you're doing things with data because it might lead you to discover a very interesting pattern. But if you then want to take that work and maybe put it on your blog, then typically you don't want to invest in writing a whole bunch of JavaScript just to get that interaction going. Thankfully though, you can take these Marimo notebooks and easily host them on your blog. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. To get the same functionality on your blog, we're going to turn our Marimo notebook into a little WASM app. This allows us to run all sorts of Python right there in the front end, and it's straightforward to generate this. Marimo comes with this export functionality that carries this HTML WASM setting that really takes your entire notebook and turns that into a single folder that can be hosted statically. So in this base setting over here, I'm taking my blog.py file and I'm making sure that it's turned into a WASM notebook that is stored in the docs demo one folder. Note, by the way, that this path over here corresponds to a path that I'm referring to in a Markdown blog post. And in particular, you can see that I'm reusing it inside of this iframe declaration. This technique is very general and it works great for static hosting. We just point to the index.html file that is being generated. Maybe we tweak the width and height a little bit, but this is already enough to get your insights from a Python notebook working on your own blog without having to write any JavaScript whatsoever. So let's first generate this file, and then I'm gonna run make docs serve because this one markdown file is currently hosted by make docs. And here's what that looks like. You can clearly see that I've got this iframe over here that's hosted, and you can also see that I've got this slider that I can go ahead and uh, use, and I have all of the interactivity that I had before. This iframe also comes with a neat little setting. I'm able to uh, show the code as well. If the user is interested in that, you can totally do that. But there are also some extra settings that we can pass along here, which could be relevant depending on what you're trying to do on your blog. I have now gone back to the terminal and I've added help at the end over here just to see what other options are available to me. And in particular, there is this mode flag that you can use. The default behavior is that you're gonna run your Marimo notebook in run mode. That is to say, you can still show the code, but it's really meant as an interactive app that we're gonna give to the end user. We could, however, also choose to give the user the ability to actually make changes into the code. And for that, you're gonna have to set the mode to edit. And let's briefly just to show that. So I'm gonna now run the same command, but I'm gonna set the mode flag to edit. So let's see what that's like. In a lot of ways, it's similar to before because I still have that slider and I have all the code available to me. But now you can actually clearly see that we get our cells in the mix. We can also see that I'm able to make small edits. And you can also see that we've got the sidebars as well as these settings that are also available to us. Now, it could be the case that you are interested in allowing the user to make all of these edits, but that you prefer to not render these extra buttons and these extra settings on the side over here. It could be that you really just want to give the user a little bit of code to play with. In that case, there's this one extra setting that we can configure, but we don't do that from the terminal. We actually do that from the iframe. So what you can do is you can set this one extra query string, show Chrome to false. And when you do that, then you get the same notebook where the user can make their edits, but the buttons on the side and the bar at the bottom, those are gone, which give you a little bit more of a clean interface. Note that this technique isn't just useful for blogs, you can also use it for documentation purposes for an open source project that you might have. You can host it on GitHub pages, but you can also host it elsewhere. This really works with whatever static hosting solution you've got. You can find some of these notebooks already being used inside of documentation pages. In particular, if you go to the latest Hugging Face NLP course on reasoning models with reinforcement learning, then you can see them embedded directly in the tutorial itself. And that's great because it allows you to play around. If you end up using this, by the way, do let us know. We have a Discord and we're really eager to see the stack being used out there in the wild. So if you've got a fun blog post that uses this, let us know. We'd love to share it.